Hi, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to play with overdying natural wool colors. The Knit Picks Simply Wool and Simply Alpaca lines use natural, undyed, unbleached colors of wool, and they actually sort the colors from the fleeces that come in to, at least the wool line, create eight uh, shades that are all based on these natural colors. Um, that exist on sheep already. And the ones that I have here are twists of some of those colors. So, for example, this is a twist of Wallace and Wanda, Winnie and Wallace, Winnie and Wanda, Woolsworth and Wanda, and then uh, Wh Winkle and Woolsworth. <laughs> All of the wool lines I think are w named with W names and all the alpaca are named with A names. I don't think I'm going to dye all five of these, but I'm going to pick three that have the most contrast to each other to dye at the same time to create a semi-solid slash tonal colorway on top of it to see how the finished color will look different depending on what the yarn looked like at the very beginning. I also have a skein in the worsted version of just Winkle on its own. And I figured it would be worth bringing in one of the bleached 100% uh, wool lines from Knit Picks, Wool of the Andes Worsted Weight Yarn. The Simply Wool line is just 100% eco wool. They don't specify the breed, probably because there's a combination of a lot. Um, but Wool of the Andes is 100% Peruvian Highland wool. And so I thought that it would be fun to have in contrast to see how these different skeins absorb color and what a similar amount of dye on all of this yarn will look like. Before I go ahead and dye these, which by the way, I think these colors are gorgeous on their own. And I think with that set of five, you could create a stunning subtle fade or any of them would be great for cabling patterns because of the softness. It would really show off a stitch pattern really, really well. Uh, but this is more of an exercise to show how different natural wool colors will look different depending on the color you put on top of it. Because don't forget that dyes are a bit additive. They aren't opaque. So if we take, say, a, I don't know what color I'm going to use yet, but let's say if we take a neon orange and put it on top of a gray versus putting it on top of a white, the color is going to look different because that natural color will impact the color that we see. Now, I don't think I'm going to do orange, but that's just uh, an example. <laughs> In my personal stash, I happen to have this collection of Simply Alpaca, and I'm not planning on dyeing these today because I ordered them with the intent to dye them, but I love them together so much that I want to turn it into something using the natural colors. So I want you to know that I am, uh, I do love to use natural colors myself, um, but sometimes people might have a natural color that they want to change the color of, and so that's one of the reasons we're doing this video. But if you're curious about the color names, we have Alonzo, Alfie, Alphonse. Uh, I have to look that up because I lost the label, and Alana. I just checked online and this color is Alma. But there are also some colors that become a deep charcoal gray, a more deep camel color, and even a black. So I had purchased some of the paler colors thinking I would over dye it, but at least at this time, I think I'm going to leave this alpaca set natural. Let's pick the three. I know I'm going to do this Winnie and Wallace because that is the, has the least amount of contrast between the different plies. And then, hmm, I think that either I would go with these two to have that set of three or these two. And I think... I'm going to go with this set right here. So we have Wallace and Wanda, Winnie and Wanda, and then Woolsworth and Wanda. Oh, okay. So we have three. I picked three that all have Wanda as the contrasting color, but then the other color is, I guess, a varying depth of a natural wool color. Okay. I think that since Wanda is probably the palest color, the closest to this bleached bare color that 
uh, that this set makes sense for a side-by-side -side comparison. Yeah, I think it will also make it easier for me to tell which is which <laughs> based on the amount of contrast that we will have once we dye it. And as for the remaining two, I'm going to save these to dye at a later date. It's harder to see, I think, on the twist yarns, but if we look at the skein of Winkle, you can see that there is variation in the color of the yarn. You can see that there are different colors that have been blended together to create this color. And so while this is undyed, and I think that there are therefore no quote dye lots, there will be different blending lots. And so if you go out and you buy this exact same color today and compare it to the color that I purchased a couple years ago, you likely will have a different color uh, just because without the control of bleaching and having a dye recipe, there will be more variation from batch to batch. But I haven't tested this. This is just a um, observation. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, if you want to learn more about any of the yarn I've showed off in this long introduction, I do have affiliate links to Knit Picks down in the video description. I am going to pre-soak all of our yarn in some plain tap water for about 30 minutes. The plan is to do a tonal colorway, and since this yarn is not super wash, it will take more time to absorb the color but it's also gonna be a little bit easier to get more even color coverage than it would be if, say, we were using superwash yarn just because of the nature of the fiber. Um, so I am gently, trying not to rub, but pressing so that way we can get good coverage on here. Yeah, there we go. And now I'm going to let this pre-soak for about 30 minutes. But before we go on, I would like to give a huge shout out and thank you to the Chemnitz Fiber patrons, including Tamara Svanes, Stacy Pace, Elena Carnes, Don Jans, Jessica Parco, Karen Siegel, and other fiber patrons whose names you'll see on the screen right now. The Chemnitz Patreon is a great way to help support the content here on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel, and there are many cool perks. Visit patreon.com slash Chemnitz to learn more, and you can find the link in down in the video description. So Chemnitz patrons, thank you so much! For our color, I wanted to pick something that was vibrant, bright, and not already muted, because I knew that whatever color we picked would probably be more muted due to these natural browns and grays in our yarn. And therefore, I selected Dharma Pink Orchid. And I thought that we would start at a 0.5% depth of shade, which would be one gram of dye per 200 grams of yarn. So I put on my respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves, and measured out 2.5 grams of the pink orchid acid dye, and then dissolved it in some warm tap water. I wasn't worried about the volume of water that I was using because we we're gonna add all of this dye to our dye bath, and the most important thing is the total amount of dye in the bath, not the volume that you originally dissolve it into. All of the tools and equipment that I'm using in this video are dedicated for dyeing yarn and are never used for food. In my 12 quart stainless steel pot, I have, I think, 24 cups of tap water. And I'm gonna add our pink dye, rinsing this out and getting it all in, oh dear. This is why you wear safety glasses in case you splash. Oh good. Okay, I'm gonna go rinse this out with just some water to get all of the color in. Now it looks like a lot of color, and there is a lot of color in here, but I figured if it looks too pastel at a half percent depth of shade, you can always add more color, but I was concerned if I started with a color that was too intense, then the differences between the different bases would be way subtle. So now I have slightly off camera our pre-soaking yarn, and I am going to, one at a time, which you can't see, gently squeeze out the pre-soaked liquid so they are not dripping. And then I am going to set them aside right here. 
This way we can add them all to the dye bath at the same time. There is no acid in our dye bath yet, and I'm probably gonna wanna add some more water, but I wanted to make sure that there would be enough space for our 500 grams of yarn. Now, we could add the yarn really saturated into the dye bath, but then the yarn wouldn't really soak up the dye as quickly, and so it'll help us get a little bit more coverage on the yarn. Ooh, and something, something in here, and this is so I can remember for washing later, but this pre-soak water is very, very cloudy, very cloudy. There's a lot of something coming out. I didn't have any soap in here, so I didn't scour the yarn, but something was dirty. Okay, now I am going to collect all of our yarn, and at the same time, I am going to dip it in and raise it up. Now, I do know ooh, that we have two sets of, or sorry, three sets of bulky yarn and two of worsted weight. Um, but color-wise, we should be able to see a lot. So what I'm gonna do is add this in and I'm gonna go and get some more water. I've got another eight cups of water. We'll see how high this goes. That's pretty good. So one big reason why I did not add any acid in here yet is that I wanted to get the water level nice and high before adding acid. So that way if I added more water, it wouldn't result in a massive change. Now it's hard to know how deep or pastel this color is right now, but I think that what I want to do is go ahead and heat set this and then see if we want to add more color. It will be tonal. There will be dark and light patches, but I am treating all five of these skeins the same. I'm now going to add 150 milliliters of white vinegar, which is equivalent to 10 tablespoons. And since we now have 32 cups of water in here, this gives us a ratio of about two and a half tablespoons of, of white vinegar per eight cups of water, in case you are curious. And so now I'm just sort of raising and lowering the yarn to help distribute the acid through the pot, but ooh, I really, really like the way that this color is looking. And already, just looking through the water, we can see a bit of a difference. But now let's move it over to the stove. I just turned on the heat, and my goal is going to be to slowly raise the temperature until we are just below a simmer. I wanna see a lot of steam and a tiny bit of movement on the surface. But even though our pot's a bit crowded, we can already feel a difference between these different yarn bases. And our lightest twist yarn has very, very little contrast with the pink over it, which is really, really exciting. I am so excited to see how all these colors turn out. So I imagine it's gonna take a fair amount of time with this much water for the pot to heat up and I want to let it heat for at least 30 minutes so I will check back in uh, in a little while. It's been a little over 30 minutes and we are nice and steamy for sure but I wanted to look and see all right I'm not seeing a lot of color left so let's carefully raise the zip ties up for a moment so that way I can easily grip them without them being too hot. Let them cool off for a minute. <laughs> then I'm gonna lift up the yarn, and wow, it lo it's looking pretty clear. There might be a hint of some yellow in here, um, similar to what we saw from our pre-soak, but it does look like most of our color has absorbed. So what I'm gonna do now is I am going to turn off the heat, but I'm gonna leave the yarn here in the cooling pot for another 30 minutes just for good measure, but then I will come and remove the yarn completely and we can check the dye bath water. Okay, now I want to carefully remove the yarn. The dye bath is still warm, so I am gently removing some liquid and just letting it drip. 
until it is a little bit drier. And then I am going to set the yarn inside a pan. I am being much more gentle with the yarn than I might be if this were super wash. Because I don't want to felt any of these beautiful, beautiful colors. I can say right now that these colors are absolutely tonal. Our pot was pretty crowded after all, but um, it is a beautiful sort of mid-level pink. And we have a lot of differences in depth, so once things are cool, we can wash it, but maybe before we wash it, we'll even take a look at some of these colors. We got some really amazing tonal variation in here, which is awesome to see, <laughs> even though I was going for something a little more even, but it's really, really fun on non-superwash yarn to get something that is so tonal. And I think it's a, a huge part because of how crowded the pot was. But we can still compare these five colors to one another. And I would say that the pink on our Wool of the Andes feels bright, like a bright medium pink. And then all these other ones feel rather dusty. And so you feel that pink go a little darker and a little darker and a little darker, depending on that natural color of the wool. And even with this tonal variation in here, all of these are the same depth of shade with regards to the pink. It's just the colors look different because our base color was different across the board. So I'm gonna wait, it's still a little bit warm. I'm gonna wait till we get to room temperature before we go wash it. And we'll, we'll make some more observations once the yarn is actually dry. Let's wash the yarn. I picked uh, two, just two of the colors to show here. I will wash the rest off camera just to show how well our pink is set. Now I do want to add a little bit of some clear dish soap, um, just gently here into our rinse bath, but because it's not super wash, you want to be careful. You don't want to do a lot of twist and a lot of agitation in here. And if I was using, say, a five gallon bucket for doing the rinsing, that might be a little bit easier. I like these white tubs for demonstration purposes. But you can see that we are not seeing any of this pretty pink come out. So I am going to carefully rinse out this soap, put the yarn through my spin dryer, and hang it up to dry, and then come back and wash the remaining three stains off camera. Here is all of the finished yarn, and it's funny because looking at this, it, part of it almost just feels like I put a pink filter over the colored yarn that we had at the very beginning. But actually I just shifted it around the other way because this is similar to the original way I had this yarn laid out. And as a reminder, Right here, this is Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Worsted Weight Yarn. It started off as a bare white, where this skein over here is a skein of Simply Wool in the color, I think, Winkle. And then finally, we have our three twist bulky Simply Wool skeins in the middle. All of them have Wanda as one of the twists, but then the lightest was Winnie and Wanda, then Woodsworth and Wanda, and then finally, uh, with the most contrast, Wallace and Wanda. I think that it's fun to see how over dyed with this bright pink, you definitely still feel the twist on all of them. If I went for a more saturated color, the twist would become a lot more subtle, um, but it's just fun to see how also more similar these three skeins of yarn feel now. Um, and it would make a really awesome fade to use all three, where the thing that is getting deeper is that other ply. The Simply Wool wasn't that dark. It's actually one of the more pastel, non-white shades in the collection, uh, but it makes a huge difference with this color. This amount of pink made a much bigger difference on the white than it did on that oatmeal-y gray color. And you could add 
absolutely take this a step further going with things more saturated but I wanted to pick a color that was a bit lighter uh, so that way you could really see the difference from that natural color really showing through and how it impacts the yarn and so here we have it five different colors of yarn that all stems from the fact that they were different colors to start with <laughs> which really doesn't seem like it's that extreme but uh, you can layer a paler but still bright color on top of different natural colors of wool and the natural color still shows through and this really comes down to the fact that dyes are not opaque you can't layer on the dye and then exclude everything that's below like you can do with some paints if you're painting on canvas with certain types of paint you can layer on top and effectively erase what's below and with dyes you can't really do that you could layer on enough pigment that it is so super saturated that it's hard to see what was before but you're not going to be able to completely erase it and so that is something that is just so so fun if you would like to learn more about the knit picks simply wool and alpaca lines once again i do have affiliate links down in the video description but you can also look for local farms to source other beautiful natural wool colors and it's really so much fun and fun to see how the colors just layer together patrons thank you so much for supporting this series i can't wait to see what you're going to vote for for next month uh, and so thank you all so much for watching. If you haven't already checked out the Patreon, you can actually follow it without signing up and signing up a pledge. So then you do get notified if I make a public post over there. But you can also sign up and get early access to this Die Pop PS series and some other really cool perks. Again, links to everything in the video description. Thank you so much for watching.